Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Does Science, and today I want to talk about operators in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. What is an operator? An operator is the mathematical object that allows us to describe physical properties in quantum mechanics. For example, we have the position operator that tells us about where a particle is, we have the momentum operator which tells us what the momentum of a particle is, or we have the energy operator which tells us what the energy of a particle is. In this video I will first of all introduce operators, and second I will describe some of their mathematical properties that will be useful in doing quantum mechanics. So let's get going! Operators are fundamental in quantum mechanics because they describe physical properties. This is reflected by the fact that they feature in the second postulate of quantum mechanics, which says that a physical quantity A is described by an operator, which we write A hat, acting on the state space V, and that this operator is called an observable. Postulate 2 tells us that operators act on state space, what that means is that they act on kets, which are the vectors of state space, and therefore they modify these kets in some manner. We're going to represent the action of operators on a state space as follows. We're going to write the operator a hat acting on a ket psi delivering another ket psi prime. And to be clear, both psi and psi prime are kets that belong to the state space. The aim of this video is to give you the tools to understand the mathematics of operators. For that reason, I will keep the discussion abstract without specifying what the operator a represents. But when we use operators in actual quantum mechanical calculations, they will represent quantities such as energy, position, and momentum, and you can find many videos in the description where I do that. One important property of the operators that we use in quantum mechanics is that they act on linear superposition of kets as follows. A acting on A1 psi1 plus A2 psi2, where psi1 and psi2 are kets, and A1 and A2 are scalars, is such that we obtain A1 A psi1 plus A2 A psi2. Operators that act in this fashion are called linear operators, and we're always going to use linear operators in quantum mechanics. As I said earlier, what I want to do in this video is to introduce the mathematical properties of operators that will be useful when solving quantum mechanical problems. The two most important properties are addition and multiplication of operators. So let's start with addition. Addition is associative, that means that a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c, and addition is also commutative, that means that a plus b is equal to b plus a. When we look at multiplication, the first thing we have to do is we have to define what we actually mean by multiplying two operators together. And in this context, multiplication of operators is defined by its action on a ket. So the product of a and b acting on a ket psi is defined by first acting on psi with b, and then acting on the result of that with a. Another way of looking at that is that the action of b on psi first gives you another ket psi prime, and then you act with a on that ket psi prime. Now that we know how to interpret the product of two operators, we can look at its properties. The first property is the fact that the product is associative. That means that a times b times c is equal to a times b times c. We next move to one of the most important properties of operators, which is the fact that under multiplication, they are not commutative. What that means is that in general, AB is not equal to BA. Because operators do not commute under multiplication, it becomes useful to define a new quantity, which we call the commutator, and we write down the commutator of two operators as square bracket A comma B square bracket, and that commutator is defined as AB minus BA. Commutators and operators that don't commute play a fundamental role in quantum mechanics and lead to some of the most striking features of this theory. For example, two operators that don't commute are associated with properties that cannot be measured simultaneously in a quantum system. A very well-known example of this is the position and momentum operators, which don't commute, which implies that you can never measure simultaneously the position and momentum of a quantum particle. The next thing I want to do is to look at the scalar product or bracket between a bra psi and the ket a phi, which is obtained by acting with an operator on another ket phi. The way to interpret this bracket is that A phi gives us a ket phi prime, and then we have the bracket between psi and phi prime, which as we know is a scalar c that in general is a complex number. The bracket between a bra and the ket, one of which is obtained by the action of an operator, allows us to define the action of operators on bras. 
So we can consider this bracket in the two following ways. The first one is that we have a bra psi and the ket a phi, and then the bracket is psi a phi, or we can consider this as a bra psi a, and then a ket phi, and the corresponding bracket is psi a phi. These two expressions are equivalent by definition, and we write them down as psi a phi. When we have a bracket between a bra and a ket, one of which is obtained by the action of an operator on another bra or another ket, we call this object a matrix element. In particular, we would call psi a phi the matrix element of the operator a with respect to psi and phi. With this definition of a matrix element, we can think of the operator a as either acting on the ket or acting on the bra. However, if we know how an operator acts on a ket to obtain another ket, that still doesn't tell us how it would act then on a bra to obtain another bra. To do that, we need to introduce the adjoint operator. To introduce the adjoint operator, we need to remember that to every cat in state space there corresponds a bra in the dual space. And if this idea is new to you, check the video in the description where I talk about Dirac notation in state space, where I introduce the ideas of cats and bras, and state space and dual space. What we know so far is that for a cat psi, there is a corresponding bra psi. What we want to know is what is the bra corresponding to the cat psi prime that is obtained by the action of an operator A on the cat psi. As always, we write the bra corresponding to the cat psi prime as the bra psi prime, and then we want to know how is that bra psi prime related to the bra psi. This is where we define the adjoint operator, and we say that the bra psi prime is equal to the bra psi and the operator A dagger, where A dagger is the adjoint operator. At this point, a dagger is only a definition. If we have an operator A that acts on a ket psi and we get another ket psi prime, then a dagger is the operator that acts on the corresponding bra psi to get the corresponding bra psi prime. We happen to call this the adjoint operator and we happen to represent it with this dagger symbol, but so far we don't know anything else about this operator. So what we have to do next is to try to understand what are the properties of this operator given this definition. The very first property is that the adjoint operator is also a linear operator. To prove that, let's start with the bra psi, that we write as a1 psi1 plus a2 psi2, and then we build the corresponding ket psi, which is equal to a1 star psi1 plus a2 star psi2, where you need to remember that the relation between kets and bras is antilinear, so we need to take the complex conjugate of any scalar. We know how an operator acts on a ket psi, so we can write a psi and then substitute the value of psi and then use linearity of the operator to obtain the final expression. At this point we're going to define a psi as psi prime and similarly a psi 1 and a psi 2 as psi 1 prime and psi 2 prime. This means that we can write the last expression in terms of the primed kets and then we can calculate the corresponding bra as a1 psi 1 prime plus a2 psi 2 prime. Now at this point we note that the primed cats are defined through the action of the A operator on the original cats. What that means is that the primed bras are related to the unprimed bras through the adjoint operator by the definition of the adjoint operator. We can therefore rewrite the expression we have here as A1 Psi1 A dagger plus A2 Psi2 A dagger. If instead of working with the components 1 and 2 we work with the full cat Psi prime, then the corresponding bra is psi prime, which is equal to the bra psi times a dagger. If we now take this last term and substitute for the bra psi the expression above in terms of the psi 1 and psi 2 bras, we can write that psi a dagger is equal to a1 psi 1 plus a2 psi 2 a dagger, and then by comparing it to the expression here we obtain a1 psi 1 a dagger plus a2 psi 2 a dagger. Putting this together, we see that the action of a dagger on a linear combination of two bras is equal to the individual action of a dagger on each of these bras, and therefore a dagger is indeed a linear operator. The next thing I want to do is to revisit the second postulate of quantum mechanics that I introduced at the beginning of the video. That postulate tells us that the operator associated with a physical quantity is called an observable. What that means is that we're only interested in the subset of operators that we call observables, and these in fact are defined as operators which are equal to their adjoint. We call these operators Hermitian operators and they are essential in the theory of quantum mechanics. So you can find the link in the description where I talk about the properties of Hermitian operators. Another very important subset of operators in quantum mechanics are operators whose inverse is equal to their adjoint and we call such operators unitary operators. 
Again, you can find the video in the description where I talk in some detail about unitary operators. When you encounter operators in your study of quantum mechanics for the first time, it can be quite daunting because they are rather abstract objects. So it is always a good idea to get some practice. What I have here is a list of properties of operators and their adjoints, and in a video linked in the description I go one by one proving each of these properties, and I think that would be good practice for you to become familiar with manipulating operators. Before I conclude I want to introduce a final idea. That is the fact that we can represent an operator as something called an outer product. Let's start by considering a bra psi and the ket phi, and we define the inner or scalar product as the bracket between psi and phi which gives us a scalar which in general is a complex number. The order of the terms in the Dirac notation is very important. So if we consider first the ket phi and then the bra psi, does this construct have any meaning? The answer to this is yes. This is what we call an outer product. What I want to do now is to show that the outer product is just another way of representing an operator, and to do that we consider the outer product of phi and psi acting on a ket chi, and then we rearrange the expression to write phi, and then we see that we have the bracket between psi and chi. This bracket of course is just a scalar which we call a, and therefore we can write the whole thing as a phi. So what is this outer product doing? We have the outer product acting on a ket chi, and the result is another ket, a phi. This is precisely the definition of an operator. An operator is an object that acts on a ket and gives you another ket. Writing operators as outer products is something that happens very often in quantum mechanics, so it is worth becoming familiar with this form. Before I conclude I just want to say that I usually write phi psi as shown here, and I leave it as an exercise for you to show that the adjoint of an outer product simply reverses the order of the terms. To summarize, I have introduced the idea of an operator A, that is an object that acts on a ket psi and gives us another ket psi prime. One fundamental property of an operator A is that it is linear. That means that when it acts on a linear superposition of two kets, it first acts on the first ket and then on the second one. If we now want to relate state space to dual space, then the action of an operator A on a ket psi is equivalent to the action of the adjoint operator A dagger on a bra psi. The action of the adjoint operator on a linear superposition of bras is also linear. And the final important property of operators is that the multiplication of operators doesn't necessarily commute. So this leads to the definition of the commutator of two operators, AB minus BA. So what have we learned today? We have introduced operators, which are the mathematical objects that allow us to describe physical quantities in quantum mechanics. Check out the video I have in the description where I do some exercises with operators, which is a great way to become familiar with them. If you liked the video, or if you'd like to send suggestions for future videos, please subscribe.